Welcome everyone to the latest edition of Lone Star Spirit. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about a couple of different things. This past weekend, I had the chance to go to the No Name Festival in Brazoria, and I've got some mixed emotions when it comes to that. And we're also going to take a look at the San Bernard and the Brazos Rivers, and it's almost like a tale of two rivers, but this goes hand in hand with us being in hurricane season and i've got some announcements and some things to share uh, with that in mind so we're going to start off with our look at the san bernard and i looked at those at two different places and i went to the brazos at farm market road 2004 and then once we finish up there, we'll go ahead and head on over to the No Name Festival in Brazoria. We are here at the San Bernard River once again there at Farm Market Road 521. Boat ramp here and beautiful early summer day. And as you can see, the river is quite healthy here. People are already enjoying the uh, water. And we're gonna go check out the Brazos and the San Bernard at a couple different locations. And the reason I'm doing this and going back here is because hurricane season is here and we have received quite a bit of rain over the past couple of weeks. Uh, Brazos does look to be somewhat swollen uh, not too terribly bad but we're gonna go check it out and see what we can find now we're over here at the uh, churchill bridge on 2611 and again uh, here at the san bernard and you'll notice that i've done a at least a couple of shots from this area and once again we see people out enjoying the early summer weather it's uh it's getting kind of warm today gonna be in the uh, mid to upper 90s today but here you can see that san bernard is looking really really good for its uh water levels and you can see also that there's quite a bit of houses along the river here and many of them are built up and try to do as much as they can to mitigate any kind of flooding but with the prospect of this being a very wild and active hurricane season uh, my fear is that a lot of these homes are going to be uh, damaged uh, almost to the point of uh, not being able to recover uh, what they've what they put their hard-earned money and time into but this week later this week uh, we, we, we learned that we may have a, a system coming into the Gulf somewhere around the 15th or so and it's just something that we we really need to uh, be uh, vigilant on and I know I've kind of beaten a dead horse with with that and you're probably tired of hearing it but as I stated we we need to be very vigilant when it comes to living on the Gulf Coast especially during hurricane season so we're gonna go to the Brazos at uh, 2004 look at it there and then we're gonna go do something fun for a change we're gonna go to the Brazoria No Name Festival and it's been a very long time since I've been there so Let's hope that uh, we go over there and, and see a lot of people and hopefully we'll get a chance to maybe talk to a few. So 
we'll see you here in just a moment we are now at the brazos river at far market road 2004 and with all the rains that have been occurring not only here in southeast texas but up around the dallas fort worth metroplex the brazos river is uh is moving along pretty good and it's swollen it, it, in, in my eyes it's swollen so i'm going to turn the camera around and give you a quick glimpse of brazos and you can see that it's up it's not as bad as it was uh, the last time we came here but you can see that the current is is pretty strong and there is quite a bit of debris in the river and it's this first portion of the video is kind of turned into the tail of two rivers that are about six miles apart at this point the san bernard was moving at a pretty leisurely pace here at 2004 the brazos is moving at a pretty good click and with more rain forecast for the early part of next week we uh we can expect a little bit more of a rise in water level here at along the brazos especially on going towards the mouth and i can only hope that the river will recede to normal levels and it we're not in any dangers of flooding or anything like that but with all the rain and then we've got hurricane season in uh, full swing now this could be a potential problem for residents along the brazos river so we're talking lake jackson uh west columbia brazoria jones creek freeport and again you're going to get really tired of me saying this but vigilance is is going to be the key thing this hurricane season all right so now let's go and at least try <laughs> to have some fun over at the no name festival and uh we'll see you here in just a little bit now there are a couple of things that you can actually see when we compare the two rivers of course it's the lower one third of the san bernard that looks good uh, of course the the northern two northern and western two thirds of the of the bernard are just in in horrible shape but in that area uh, it is somewhat flood prone especially around the uh, sweeney 521 area and the brazos uh, just because of all the rain especially up around uh, lake possum kingdom that they opened the 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 dam there and, and a lot of water was released through that dam and it's made its way down to uh, brazoria county fort bend county uh, all throughout this whole area we have had a lot of uh, flood warnings and things of that nature when it comes to the brazos of course the san jacinto and the trinity rivers have just been inundated over the past uh, several weeks so that looks like it might actually start to kind of calm down and get more of a normal type of setting there but with that said i don't necessarily want to make an announcement but i do want to talk just a little bit about something that is upcoming very soon and that's going to be the brazoria county hurricane preparedness expo and that's going to be this weekend june 15th 
from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Mission is free, and it's going to be at the Brazoria County Fairgrounds, and that and that is at 901 South Downing Street in Angleton. And it looks like from here you're going to be getting some a lot of good information uh, when it comes to the National Weather Service, emergency preparation for your pets, which are also parts of they're part of the family too, and keeping food safe during a power outage, which is more than likely going to happen when it comes to any kind of severe storm. There's there's a a, a pretty good chance that somebody's a lot of people are going to be out of without power, and then the hazmat incidents. And unfortunately, uh, those are. Uh, those can occur during uh, hurricanes, so it's good to know what to do in your area. And some of the activities, they're going to have a, uh, a touch the truck. That's going to be emergency response vehicles. I, I would imagine that's going to be ambulances, fire trucks, something something cool for the kids uh, to do. Free hot dogs while supplies last. They're at, uh, SPCA of Brazoria County will be offering free microchips for pets while supplies last, and they're going to have some door prizes and goodie bags, of course, while supplies last. And most importantly, it's going to be the Emergency Preparedness Exhibitor Booth. This is where you can get all of your information. So make sure that you go to the uh, Brazoria County Fairgrounds this weekend, this Saturday from 10 to 1 to get that information. It's very important that uh, that you learn as much as you can and once again i'm going to drive home get a noaa weather radio that's probably going to be one of the biggest things that you can do to help make sure that you're prepared make sure you're in the know when these storms start really churning up it like they're they're calling for 11 hurricanes uh this season and the majority of them, or at least half of them, are probably going to be Category 3 or higher. So it's very important that you do get uh, a weather radio. One other thing before we get into the No Name Festival, uh, I am part of a Facebook group, uh, 2024 Hurricane Season, and one of the questions that was asked in one of their forums was, what is your number one piece of advice for somebody who is uh, fleeing from a hurricane they're 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 headed to higher ground and I read through the comments and a couple of things that I was kind of surprised I didn't see and I went ahead and you know made my post and everything like that but one thing and and you've already heard me talk about it it's the NOAA weather radio you've got to have that but another thing that I feel that was brought up and maybe needed to be expanded on a little bit was was to more or less know your escape route and that's that's a great that's a great idea but if you are a resident living in Brazoria County and this is especially true from just south of Jones Creek and you can take this all the way up to just outside of Rosenberg, just south of Rosenberg on Highway 36 in Fort Bend County. They're, they've been working on turning Highway 36 into a four-lane highway. Now, for the longest time, for a lot of people, Highway 36 was a great way to get out of the way of a hurricane. You could get all the way to... Uh, interstate 10 that way and you're not having to deal with the mess of 288 going through houston uh you can you can get to uh you can get and then from interstate 10 you can get just to about anywhere you need to go uh oh, that's out of the path of the storm but i do feel it is very important that you have more than one escape route and what i mean by that is if your main escape route, let's say, is 288, and that turns into just a uh, a really big just mess, 
you can certainly or you should certainly have alternate routes that you can get off of 288 and maybe get to uh, another road or something like that. Really do your research and, and have these things ready to go in advance so when and if this does happen, you are 100% prepared. All right, now I'm going to get off the hurricane and, and flooding uh, bandwagon horse uh, soapbox, whatever you like to call it, and we're going to talk a little bit about the No Name Festival in Brazoria. Before I get into the footage from the No Name Festival, I, I this this was a, kind of a wake up call for me. This was something that. I, I I left. Well, let me start from the beginning. So, the the festival actually kicked off this past Saturday, nine a.m. And I decided, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm going to wait till about ten o'clock, and I'm going to go before it gets too incredibly hot because it was hot this weekend. And I drove past the uh, the fair or the. Uh, the civic grounds there at the Zori Heritage Foundation that used to be the elementary school there. And I noticed that there really there really wasn't anyone there. So drove the block, decided to go ahead and park, walked around, and I, I still saw vendors kind of setting up and just seemed like it, it wasn't ready. So okay, let's let's go let's go kill some time. Let's go burn some time. Therefore, I went to the San Bernard and the Brazos River to do a little filming over there. By the time I got back, it was around noon, maybe just slightly before noon, and maybe 50 people there. And I was, I was really, really, really disappointed in the turnout for the No Name Festival. And I remember when I was in... Uh, high school and the No Name Festival was going. I, you you couldn't fit more people in in that area. And they used to have it over by the American Legion Hall, and you had massive cookoffs, barbecue cookoffs, and you had all kinds of games and and things going on. There were lots of vendors out there, and this year I was I was very very disappointed. So. I'm going to go ahead and roll that footage of me walking through and you'll hear some of my comments on that and we'll come back and talk about it just a little bit more. All right, so we're here at the Brazoria No Name Festival and this is the second time that I've stopped today here. Uh, first time was around 10 o'clock and there weren't a whole lot of people here. Some of the vendors were still kind of setting up. So went and did some other filming, as you saw earlier. And got back here right around noon, two hours later. And unfortunately, not much has changed. The turnout, and it is... 15 minutes to one o'clock and yes it's it's warm uh, almost hot but I'm rather disappointed in the turnout not saying that there's nobody here but I know that the Brazoria Chamber of Commerce, Brazoria Heritage Foundation have worked really hard to try to make this event a success. And you can see, you know, there are there are people here. We do have cars and people are coming and going. But I just when I compare this to the history celebration that happened in March, 
and how lively it was really kind of disappointed and understand people don't have the money that they normally would have in this economy but I, I, I'm, I'm it makes me sad is what it is but we're gonna walk through kind of give you an idea of what's here and I'm gonna humbly ask that if you're in Brazoria County, and it doesn't matter if you're on the east side of the Brazos River, so I'm talking Angleton Lake, Jackson, Freeport, Clue, don't ignore the west side of the Brazos. We have great towns over here, Brazoria, Sweeney, West Columbia. They're historic, they're worth your time, and we need more people in the surrounding communities to support each other. So let's go ahead and do a quick walk through and we'll then we'll send it back to the studio. As you could see there, there there really was not much of a turnout at all. And man, I, I to be honest with you, I, I, I wanna I wanna just kind of go off and just rant and rave and scream and holler and just be that guy part of me wants to do that so badly but that really doesn't accomplish anything it, it may bring a, a few eyes to the video and if if people talk about it that hey you know charles went crazy about the no-name festival or something like that most people don't even know the hell the no-name festival is and in that video, the previous footage, you heard me mention that if you're east of the Brazos, do not ignore these towns that are on the west side of the Brazos, Brazoria, Sweeney, and West Columbia. I mean that to the absolute core of my heart. I feel that if a lot of people, and I'm, I'm not throwing everybody in the same basket, but it seems, it feels, and perception is nine-tenths reality, at least in my book, that people from Lake Jackson, from Clute, from Angleton, unless they have to go to West Columbia, Brazoria, or Sweeney, they would avoid those towns 
at all costs, like they're the Black Plague or something like that. These are historic towns. These towns, though small, they have they really do have things to offer. They they have great restaurants. Burnt biscuit. Oh my God, the burnt biscuit. You've got Margarita Jones, which is part of the La Casona family in West Columbia. You've got Republic Barbecue, Bulldog Cafe in Sweeney. You've got there's there's places to go, things to do, things to learn about the county and the state that you live in. And when a small town like Brazoria goes out of its way to try to put something together, and, and you've got a 30-plus-year 30, 30 history of the No Name Festival occurring in the town of Brazoria. And, and I walk there, and I walk through, and I just I see dang near nothing. I, it, 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 it hurt. It, it hurt my heart. It hurt my soul. It hurt everything about me. And as you can tell by the shirt that I'm wearing right now, I am Brazoria through and through. That is my home. I want the best for it. I want it to thrive. I want it to be anything and everything it can be. That's good, of course. Did, I'm serious. This this hurt. I mean, I the rest of my day and part of Sunday was was just shot because I could not get past the poor turnout at the No Name Festival. And I have to give. I have to take my hat off to Brazoria Heritage Foundation, Brazoria Chamber of Commerce for doing this, for putting this out there, and and doing everything that they could to try to make this this no name festival as successful as possible now look i understand a lot of people don't have money in this economy this economy is for all intents and purposes 100% crap we don't have the what's a clean way to put it screw you money uh, that that we had four or five years ago. People just, you know, it's gra- it's just at the end of graduation season, and I'm sure a lot of people spent money on their graduating children, and 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 I get that. Doesn't mean you have to go and buy from the vendors. Just support and go. I mean, I, my God, I knew, I know it was hot. I was out there, I was sweating, but I was there. I was there, and I was supporting the No Name Festival. I was supporting the town. Hey, it, go out there for an hour. Go out there for 45 minutes. Go out there for a half hour. Just walk around. They, did, they, they had the corral set up for the, for the Stick Horse Rodeo, and nobody was there. No one. Now, with every dark cloud, there is a silver lining. And I actually had a couple of them. (laughs) Chamber of Commerce had this amazing t-shirt available for purchase. And I have been looking for an actual Brazoria t-shirt to wear and i by god found it and it is an amazing shirt it is now my number one favorite shirt also found this hat they have this hat resorga cradle of texas my new favorite hat i also ran into a couple of vendors that shared with me the disappointment of the turnout which I totally understood. I was with them on that one. But I want to give them just a little bit of of praise 
and the two that I'm going to talk about and, and, and show you one is buddy's handmade knives and amazing people to talk to very, very, very friendly. And in the video, I'm going to leave the sound on. I'm not going to mute the sound, but he crafted me this, which I love. It's fantastic. He did it. He told me 20 minutes. I think it took him 15. And I, I love this thing. It will always be from this point forward. It will be in every video. Right there. And also came across another vendor called Shimmer Me Timbers. And they've got some amazing stuff. And this is not, you know, look, y'all, if you want to turn away or now, that's fine. Yes, I'm kind of plugging them because I, I, I was impressed with them. And here we go. I'm going to show you some of the amazing things that Buddy's Handmade Knives and Shimmer Me Timbers has to offer. What sign? What sign's up there? Oh, it's up there? Okay, good. That way you can get Buddy as our logo. This must be time consuming. Yeah. Well, you gotta know you know yeah, you gotta know what you're doing up, with the machine. Set up the design and, and it, it engrains it. So. My my son works for a company called HTX Made and uh -huh. they do uh, uh, custom benches and booths for okay, restaurants yeah. and stuff like that, upscale furniture. It does take you know, some of the designs take longer than the other. I I would I can only imagine. Like all these are hand blinked, so every stone on there I put it on there. Wow. One by one. I'm glad you're saying that because I'll 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 review this before I plug it. Yeah. Those are cool pins too. Yeah. Koozies. Yeah. Wow. As you can see, they've got some amazing material there. Now with Buddy's handcrafted, not handmade, handcrafted knives, with the signs, he'll make any sign you want. No matter the language, he will make any sign that you want. And all of his knives are food grade. So you can use them in the kitchen, preparing your meals, uh, use them as steak knives, what whatever it may be. And one thing at this coming weekend, and they will be in League City at the Soul Free Cafe's Makers Market this weekend, June 15th, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And that's going to be at League Park. 512 Second Street in League City. And I invite you to go and check out Buddy's Handcrafted Knives and Shimmer Me Timbers. And if you go and you see this video, tell them Charles from Lone Star Spirit sent you. And 
just go and and see the amazing things that they can do and the 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 hand rhinestone or all the gems and everything they're they're done by hand individual it's not done by a machine this, these people take pride in their work as you can see here this, i love this thing this is this is top 10 best things that i've got right here so go and check them out at soul freaks cafe makers soul freak cafes makers market this weekend in league city at league park that's going to wrap up this episode of lone star spirit <clears throat> this one a little bit longer than normal but I had some things I had to get off my chest, and I did get a little long-winded, and I apologize for that. But everyone, make sure you're staying vigilant. Keep your eye on the golf. Make sure you get that weather radio. Look at your escape routes. Go to League City this weekend and go check out Buddy's Handcrafted Knives and Shimmer Me Timbers. Until next time, I'm Charles. This is Lone Star Spirit. Have a great weekend, everyone, and we'll see you next time.